All right, everybody, for, um, for a more complex example um, and to introduce a, an extremely important view directive, which we have not yet covered, V4, uh, I have here an array of puppy objects. These are all just puppies uh, with name, gender, age, breed, weight in kilograms, and an image. They're objects contained in, a, in an array, excuse me, um, in this puppies property in our data object in our view instance. Okay. And we're going to use the v4 directive to demonstrate very, very efficient looping logic using Vue.js. So first thing I'm going to do is inside my empty app div, I'm going to create another div and I'm going to type in v4 equals and in these quotation marks I'm going to write puppy in puppies. Simple as that. Okay, Puppies here is directly tied to this property in our data object. Puppies, 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 puppies. If I write puppies here, the browser looks for puppies in my data object. If I write elephant, the browser is going to look for an elephant property in my data object. I don't have one, so that would throw an error. Puppies. In is a keyword that view recognizes. Okay, In is a keyword which view recognizes, and puppy is a name I made up. This is like me declaring a brand new variable. I could name this fruit if I wanted to do fruit in puppies, um, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Okay, but puppy is a variable name uh, which I made up on the spot and plugged into this syntax which view recognizes and what puppy now refers to is one single object in the puppy's array. Okay, so every object in this array can now be referred to as puppy. And that's the entire object, puppy, in puppies. Okay, each one of them is a puppy. Simple as that. Um, this syntax is very common when using the v4 directive in Vue, or uh, if you're familiar with Angular or React, there are very similar counterparts in there. There's um, ng repeat. Uh, I forget the one that React uses right now, but they're very similar. Um, and you'll s frequently see syntax like this. You'll see student in students, or shirt in shirts, or puppy in puppies. Okay? <clears throat> uh, now, inside of this div, well, what, what, what this directive is actually going to do is create an identical div like this every time there is a puppy in puppies. So as many puppies as we have, we're now going to have divs, which is great. I mean, this is essentially running a complicated for loop without having to write a for loop. <laughs> um, so that's excellent, but this div is still empty. There's no content. So first thing, let's go ahead and put these images inside each one of these divs. So each div is going to have an image of its respective puppy. So inside this Div, which you can think of as a template for all the divs which contain puppies. I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to create an image element and I'm going to use vbind to bind the source attribute to puppy.image. Okay, and we're right back to regular old dot notation and parsing objects for information. Puppy is the object. The object. It's, it's, it's like writing uh, puppies at the i index dot image. It's exactly what we're doing right now, except we're taking advantage of the v4 directive and the syntax it recognizes. All we need to do is write puppy. So puppy dot image is referencing each image inside of puppy. And it's going to plug that into the source of this dynamically generated image element which each one of these divs is going to have. Um, let's just preemptively give these uh, let me get rid of that, give these images a little styling so they're not enormous. I'm going to make, make 
them have a <clears throat> max height of 150 pixels and border radius 50%. Okay. So let's see where we are so far. Reload. Looks like I'm throwing an error. Unexpected identifier. Oh, I'm missing some commas. Sorry, folks. This will just take a second. Always remember your commas in your key value pairs. There we go. And now we have <laughs> an image of a puppy in each div and they uh, we have as many divs and images as we have puppies. So this is our pit bull, this is our Scottish terrier, this is our French bulldog, uh, I don't even know what that is, a Pomeranian, beagle, and greyhound, Italian greyhound. Okay, let's take this a step further. Let's also be responsible, um, responsive developers and make sure we have an alt in each image and let's bind that to puppy.name. How about that? Okay. Or uh, let's actually make this a, a full-on concatenated, um, <clears throat> concatenated sentence. So how about something like Puppy.name plus a plus comma a close quotes plus puppy dot breed. So now it should read something like Lily a beagle. Barney no Barney a beagle. Lily a Italian greyhound. So we might need N there. Alright, I'm I'm gonna backtrack on that. Let's just leave it a puppy name for now. Or um, take out the, the A. It'll just be Lily Italian Greyhound. How about that? Okay, so we're not going to see it as is, but if I take out this source and we have all of our alts. Lily Italian Greyhound, Barney Beagle, Noami Pomeranian, Ongaron, French Bulldog, Pepper, Scottish Terrier, Rollo, Pitbull. Okay, let's bring the images back. Um, and let's just go a little bit further with customizing each of these divs. Um, above the image, let's put their name. I'm going to create an H1. And in this H1, I'm going to use interpolation or mustache syntax to simply include puppy.name. Great. And now below the image, in an H let's include puppy.breed and underneath breed in an h2 let's include puppy.gender and underneath gender also in an h2 let's do their uh, let's do their age first. Um, now, quick thing to note, the age in these objects is a decimal. And this is um, 0.9 years old. Barney is 0.9 years old. And that's not terribly relevant for most users. Users typically want to know if it's less than a year old, how many months old is it. So we need to convert that. We can't just do puppy.age. We need to do puppy.age times 12. And we can do that in this mustache syntax. Let's make sure these are all labeled. Okay. Okay. There we go. Breed Italian Greyhound, gender female, age 8.399999. Um, first of all, let's add months after this. 
Okay, and now let's try to make this number a little more meaningful. Um, what do we need to do to make that number more meaningful? Well, let's round it. Let's do math.round puppy.age times 12. And there we go. We've used two-way data binding or interpolation to plug in information directly from JavaScript, performed JavaScript arithmetic, and rounded that arithmetic and concatenated it inside of a full string, all without writing any actual JavaScript. We've done this in our HTML using nothing but this double curly bracket, curly brace syntax. And we've rendered the information visible in our HTML, uh, slightly formatted, and um, more meaningful for our user base. Um, another example of converting information into something more meaningful. Um, let's take a look at weight. Let's do another H2. Weight. <clears throat> now, we could include puppy.weight in kilograms, but let's pretend our user base is American and therefore have no idea what a kilogram is. So we need to convert these kilograms to pounds, right? So puppy dot weight times kilograms, 8.5, how many pounds is that? You have to multiply it by 2.2, approximately. And let's also round that as well. Let me uh, expand this. Okay, math dot round, puppy dot weight in kilograms times 2.2. And let's concatenate it with pounds. And then, wow, that's a heavy Italian Greyhound puppy. Uh, okay, so I didn't do my research when actually making up these numbers, but um, I don't know, maybe for eight months that's all right. Anyway, <clears throat> breed, Italian Greyhound, gender, female, age, eight months, weight, 15 pounds. That's Lily. And there's Barney and Nuomi and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, we could continue to format this however we'd like. Um, I'm personally inclined to make our images taller right now because they are just adorable. There we go. <laughs> um, so you could obviously format these however you'd like. Uh, there's no limitation to the degree of interactivity you could add here. Maybe when a user clicks on a puppy's picture, a, a class is triggered that gives this whole div a background color and uh, a border and um, yeah, I don't know, maybe the text all centers and the image gets a little larger. All things that you could do. You could just leave this an adorable gallery of puppies. But more to the point, we have used the V4 directive to create a lot of content with very little code. And all of that code, literally all of that code, has been HTML. We have coded JavaScript logic, JavaScript arithmetic, and used two-way data binding, view binding, and um, an implied for loop to create a lot of dynamically generated content without having to code out all of that content or create a very complex constructor function or anything like that. And if we added a puppy to this array, their content would also be dynamically, automatically generated and added onto this list. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful. That's the V4 directive. Once again, puppies is the array in our data object. Puppy is the variable name or variable reference for each item in the puppies array. And I have decided on that name. You as the developer will decide on this name. So do not get confused if you see somewhere else someone using a v4 directive and you see something like pineapple in fruit. Well presumably all of their fruits are going to be pineapples but that pineapple was made up by the developer. Student in students, if you can only find a students variable declared in the JavaScript that's still okay because student has been declared inside this v4 directive. That's how that works. That's how Vue expects to read this.
That's how the syntax works. Okay. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Um, in the meantime, give this a try. Uh, follow along with this video. Code out the same code. And um, have fun. You can turn this into a real project.